Hi everybody, thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be a Q&A. I'm super excited to do this because I haven't done a Q&A in a very long time. I started getting a lot of comments asking if I would do a Q&A, so I included it in my latest Twitter poll. I do a Twitter poll about once a month asking what video you guys want to see next and then I get that on my schedule. So if you don't follow me on Twitter yet, I'm just at by Samantha March and the Q&A won. So we are here now doing the Q&A and I'm very excited for it because like I said, I haven't done it in a long time so I'm excited to get some of your questions. I did ask on Twitter to send me them over there or through my Snapchat. So I'm just gonna go through and try to answer as many questions as I can. May is my month of giveaway extravaganza month. So check out in the description box down below. I have quite a few giveaways going on right now. I have one celebrating my latest book release that will have seven winners. I'm giving away the Sephora Give Me Some Nude lip set. I'm giving away the Kim Kardashian West and Kylie lip set. And I'm giving away the new Carly Bible eyeshadow palette. So one of her bracelets from Pranava Beauty. All of those giveaways will be linked down below. So also if you haven't joined my fam yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button because that is how you must enter all of these giveaways that I just mentioned, but I do post videos four times a week. I created the Will I Buy It series where I talk about new makeup, will I buy it, will I not buy it. I post those on Wednesdays. I also post on Thursdays, Sundays, and Mondays, so you get videos from me four times a week. So I hope that you will subscribe before you go, but why don't we go ahead and jump into the Q&A. Okay, so I'm going to start with a couple of Twitter questions that came in right when I announced that the Q and I had won the poll. So this is from my friend Tinka. Hey girl. So she says, first question, how did you manage to build your company Marching Inc. so early in your life? So I started my company Marching Inc. in 2010, I believe. 2010 was when I like filed all the paperwork to create an LLC. And Marching Inc. was originally designed as my publishing company. I did own a publishing company for several years. I closed it last year. Um, I was publishing books for other authors and now I'm just publishing for myself. And I kind of decided to start Marching Inc. because I just always knew that I wanted to own a business. I always knew that I wanted to do something for myself and I always knew that a traditional job, a corporate job, a desk job, anything like that, it just was not for me. I've known that from a very, very early age. So when I decided to really make a go for it and decided to really um, be serious about publishing books, I wanted to have it under my own imprint. Like I was never the person that wanted to be traditionally published. I didn't want an agent. I definitely have like an entrepreneur spirit and that was always what I was interested in. So that's kind of why I decided to start Marching Inc. Um, was to publish my own books, but then it's fallen under the other categories. Like when I file my taxes, you know, I'm under an LLC because I do have a lot of other um, smaller businesses under that umbrella too. So that's kind of why I started it. I just wanted to be a girl boss from a very young age before it was a hashtag. <laughs> okay, another one from Twitter. This is Teresa. She said, what made you start filming videos for YouTube? I actually, when I first started my YouTube channel, I started it as a spinoff of my blog, which is chickletplus.com which is mainly a book blog. When I started Chicklet Plus, I had in mind that I wanted it to encompass everything that I have interest in, such as books, fitness, beauty, fashion, lifestyle, celebrity. Like I wanted it to encompass all of that. I kind of got away from it over the years because I would get so much feedback saying like people didn't take me seriously because I would write beauty articles. I needed to focus solely on books and I really listened to that and I'm upset with myself that I did but it's okay because I got back on track. Um, so I decided to start YouTube because I was watching other YouTube videos like I feel like I was really late to even watching YouTube videos. I was very late to that game. But when I finally did, I just was so inspired and I would watch other people's videos and just think, I can do that. Like, I totally can do that. And so when I started, I was like, well, you know, start with what you know. And I know books and I know writing. So a lot of my first videos were book reviews and like I did um, book mail, all the books that I get from publishers and authors and, you know, how I write a book and how to market your books and things like that. But I didn't have the spark for my YouTube channel for books like I did have the spark for my book blog. It just wasn't translating the same. And I also wasn't getting a lot of support, which was kind of a bummer because I've been in the book industry since 2009 and I feel like I've made a lot of really good friends and good connections but it was like when I started YouTube no one really 
was supporting me over here and it was kind of like whoa what's going on and then I was like you know what I'm tired of like listening to everybody tell me I can't do all the things I want to do because I'm someone who firmly believes whatever it is you want to do you can do it like we live in a world where you can make your own opportunities the hardest part I think for people is to figure out what it is you want to do but once you figure it out once you know you just got to go for it so I was like you know what I'm done with people telling me that I can't be this and I can't be that so I changed it I started to add in more beauty videos like I would do two book videos a week and then one beauty video and the beauty videos the views were so much higher than my book ones I was getting more subscribers when I would post beauty videos and just having more conversations and interactions and so I was like okay I'm changing it and it was about one year ago that I switched to fully a beauty channel and you know those are the only videos that I post now are beauty related videos and I've seen a lot of success from it so um, that was definitely a lesson to me that you know don't let other people tell you what to do with your life or tell you how to run your life you just got to do it for you so yeah another Twitter question this is from Celia Willa hopefully I'm saying that right she says do you have any secrets in your books I don't think I have any secrets in my books um, not off the top of my head I can't think of like ever writing a secret sometimes I can write more freely of how I feel like maybe if I was having like an argument with someone I'm able to express it better in a book than I am in conversation um, but my seventh book so not the book that I'm currently writing but the one that I'm currently plotting out my seventh book um, that will have a situation in there that I kept secret from a lot of people for a very long time I will go into more detail in that book and um, have the characters kind of reenact something that I went through that I didn't tell a lot of people so book seven coming soon <laughs> she also asked how many hours do I write um it just depends on where I'm at in my schedule some days I don't write at all some days that's the majority of my day some days I can get in 30 minutes and that's it it just depends on where I'm at with that and it depends on where I'm at with other books if I'm running certain promotions for them um, if I'm plotting out a book, it just it just really, really varies on my schedule. She also asked my favorite book as a child. I loved the Babysitter's Club. Like, I loved the Babysitter Club books. Like, back when I was doing book videos, I have a whole video about my favorite Babysitter Club books because that was, like, my favorite series ever. What is your pet peeve? Negativity. Drives me crazy. Do I have any bad habits? Well, I'm sure, I'd, I'm sure I have a ton of bad habits. Um, I'm very much like a clutter person, which I know drives my husband crazy. Like I can you'd be wearing a shirt, take it off, throw it on the floor, grab another shirt, put it on, don't like it, take it off, throw it on the floor, grab another shirt. I mean, my closet is a disaster all of the time and my office is typically usually a disaster as well, but I don't know. I can't do the thing where I like grab something and then put it back nicely. It's just not for me. And then she also asked, do I have, or what are my strengths and weaknesses? I think some of my strengths are that I'm pretty independent, um, I'm very hardworking, I have a lot of self-motivation, I work from home, you know, I own my own business, I write my own books, I don't have an editor or a publisher with deadlines telling me when I need to be finished, I get these books out on my own, um, so I definitely have a good work ethic, I think. My weaknesses, sometimes it drives me crazy how sensitive I am, like the smallest things really can bother me. Um, not a lot with like negativity when it comes to social media though, that I'm pretty good at letting like roll off my shoulders. It's more like things in real life, like I don't know, I can just like the smallest things that like my husband says to me or my mom or a friend, like it'll just stick with me and cry all the time which is super annoying. And then also another weakness is that sometimes I don't know when to stop, like sometimes I can kind of run myself into the ground because I can doubt myself a lot. I feel like it's really hard when you are fully self-employed because you never know where your next paycheck is coming from. You know, your months are always different. Some weeks are amazing or some months are amazing, some months are terrible, some months are okay. And it's just, a, it's a very stressful, like I love what I do and I'm so appreciative that I can work from home and I have this office and I'm doing what I love, but it's also very stressful and it can make you doubt yourself when you have those bad months. I can just get into a funk and be like, what did I do? I need to go back to a real job. Like how am I surviving on this type of thing? Um, so I can kind of get in my own mind and doubt myself and get really down on myself, but um, I figure out a way to turn it around. I figure it out. So a couple of Snapchat questions. This is from Danielle. Hey girl. She said, my question for you is, would you ever do a husband tag or any sort of husband video? That is totally not up to me. That is 100% up to my husband whose name is Mitch. Mitch is just not like a social media guy. 
I don't really know if he would be ever be up to it. You guys don't see him on my Snapchat a lot because that's not really like who he is and that's not really his personality. It'll totally be up to him if he would ever do a tag video with me. I have no idea if he would. Um, if you guys want to see any sort of husband tag videos, leave me some comments down below. I can share those with them and maybe it would convince them. But yeah, I'm leaving it up to him. I would never like try to pressure him to do it because if it's not in his comfort zone, I wouldn't want to take him out of his comfort zone because then you wouldn't be getting his true self on camera. He'd probably have to have a drink or seven before we did a video regardless. But uh, yeah, maybe someday, but probably not soon. All right, the next question is from Mickey. Hey girl. She says, with all that you've been through, how do you keep up your self-esteem and self-confidence? You seem very comfortable in your own skin and that's remarkable after the hard life you have lived. I did share my story on Snapchat um, a couple weeks back. So I don't know, for me, honestly, I think a big part of it has just been like, getting older I just turned 30 which is super fun um, but honestly I feel like it's taken me a lot of years to understand what it is I really want in life to understand how to go for it and understand that I feel like I used to be a person that was very afraid of rejection all of the time like I was that person that would be too afraid to go for something or ask for something because I was too afraid of hearing no and now I understand like if I don't ask for it, if I don't go for it, I'm not gonna get it. No one's gonna change my life for me. There was there was a lot of times in my life where I thought that like karma would come back around and like change my life for me. Like I was just waiting for it because I'd been through so many bad things. I was like, clearly something has to change and you know, someone's gonna come along and change my life. And I finally realized that if I wanted to make a life change, I was the only one that was gonna do it. And it, it took me definitely a lot of years to get there. And also with feeling more confident is that I just realized that if, to me, if you're not your own biggest cheerleader, then something is wrong. Like you have to be your biggest motivator. You have to be your biggest cheerleader and you have to just believe in yourself. Even when you have those days where you're like, I'm horrible. I'm messing up my life. Like this day is crazy. Like if you follow me on Snapchat, you know, I can get like really dramatic for at least an hour and then I figure out that like life will actually go on. But to me, when I realized that like I needed to always keep my motivation up, I always needed to be my cheerleader, things really started to change. I also asked when you go to Disneyland, what's the first ride you wanna go on, the one you've been waiting to do your whole life? I have no idea. Um, I love roller coasters, but I really love like water, um, water rides as well, so I don't know. I'd wanna go on them all. I love water parks, I love theme parks. For my bachelorette party we went to a water park because that's what i wanted to do like i'm still all about it i would love to go to disneyland one day that would be awesome so i believe this is from april hi she says when did you first get into makeup and when did you decide you wanted to do a youtube channel um i've always really been into makeup but i never knew how to like put it on or apply it i would love even as like a little girl going into my mom's makeup my grandma's makeup oh poor grandma i would go through her makeup all of the time um, but I would like, even as I got older, I'd go to the beauty aisles and I would buy things that I had no idea how to use. And I kind of always held myself back because I'm not very artistically creative. And I feel like being artistically creative or somewhat creative is a big part of makeup. And I felt like I never got it. I'm terrible at art, drawing, painting, imagining things. I mean, it's just, it's just not me. And so when I would try to do makeup and I wouldn't get it right, I'm like, well, obviously I'm not because I just can't do it. You know, I'd get so down on myself and I wouldn't even try it. And again, it just finally got to a point where I was like, you know what? I've always been interested in this. I watch the videos. I read articles. I write articles. You know, I write reviews. Like, I just need to figure it out. And I just sat down and watched a ton of YouTube videos and kept practicing. I'm not a fantastic by any means today, but I still practice and I still enjoy it. And what's funny to me is that I actually now really enjoy the process of putting on makeup because I like the creativity that it allows me to express. It's a completely different creativity from writing a book, but they both help keep me in that creative zone. And you know, I'm just a creative person, even though I might not be able to like draw or, you know, do art in that way. I definitely am a creative person and I just kind of had to like unlock that for myself, but I'm really happy that I did. And then her other question was, um, when did you decide you wanted to do a YouTube channel? It was about two years ago. And then last year I changed to the full beauty channel. So this question, I screenshotted it, but it didn't come up with a name, so I'm sorry about that. But the question is, will you film an updated work routine video? You filmed one one to two years ago when you first started YouTube, and I really liked how you explained your organization and time management in that video. 
would you guys want to see a work routine video? Either, I don't know how I would do it, a work routine video or how I organize my day. I don't know, let me know. Or something vlog style. I've never vlogged before. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Okay, so that was a video. I didn't realize it was going to be a video. I was trying to click my volume up. She said if I were to change my hair color, what would it be? And then she also said what kind of movies do you like? If I were to change my hair color, I don't know. I haven't done my hair in a very long time. I always used to want to dye it like very, very blonde. I used to be very blonde. And then I'm just kind of more into like the dirty blonde with my, I have, this is my natural hair color underneath. I always leave that alone. Um, but I've always kind of wanted pink hair. I just recently got a pink wig that I cannot figure out for the life of me. I do not know how people wear wigs. I'm still desperately trying. What kind of movies do I like? Comedies. I like comedies. I like to laugh. I hate scary movies. I hate sad movies. I just want to laugh and like be happy. I can't take sad movies. I'm way too sensitive for that. Okay, this one is from Rosie. She says, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And what's your favorite thing to do in your free time besides books and makeup? So where do I see myself in 10 years? I never really know because I feel like, I literally feel like twice a year, I get a new idea of what I want to do or a new business plan that I want to start or something. Like I feel like I'm just constantly changing and evolving and I feel like that's really exciting. Um, I don't feel like I'm ever very good at like locking myself into one thing, but in 10 years I'll be 40. So that's cool. But really, I always, when I get asked this question of, you know, where do I see myself in the future, I just really hope that I'm still pursuing things that I want to do and just building the life that makes me the happiest. That's that's just really, really what I hope for. And then she said, besides books and makeup, what do I like to do in my free time? I'd love to work out. I'm really big into fitness. I really love yoga. I love to practice yoga. I've been thinking about filming a couple fitness videos, which I think would be really fun. Let me know if you guys like that idea in the comments down below. But yeah, I love working out. Um, and eating ice cream. That would be, those are, those are my other passions in life. <laughs> this one is from Nobody Karens. She says, what is your favorite YouTube influencer brand collab? My favorite influencer brand collab. That's a tough one. Like my most recent favorite one, I think would have to be the Casey Holmes and Smashbox Cosmetics Spotlight Palette. I got mine in Pearl. It's so freaking good. It's so freaking good. Like Casey did a bomb job on that. Um, I also really like my Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics face palette with the blushes and the highlights. I absolutely love that one. Those are some of my favorites. That was a good question. <laughs> I have been waiting for the storm to roll in the entire time I've been filming this video and it is here. I've had my ring light on the whole time but it's probably a lot darker now because I don't have a backlight on. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up this Q&A before things get really crazy out there. Um, my question is, did you ever think about giving up on YouTube before you made it? And if so, what made you keep going? I don't know if I want to say like I feel like I've made it or anything like that. Um, I mean, I work really hard and I think I've seen really good results um, from working hard. So I think that's good. Um, but she said, did you ever think about giving up? There was a couple times in the beginning when I was mostly just the book channel because it was kind of, I would get down on myself because you know, there wasn't like the support coming in like maybe I thought it was going to um, and that kind of bummed me out. But another reason that I kind of thought maybe of stopping was because I wasn't finding as much joy in filming those videos as I thought that I would because I get excited every single day when I write a book review. I get excited when I start reading a book. I enjoy it. Like the reason I started my blog was to be able to connect with people who were like-minded like me because I didn't have a lot of people in my real life that really enjoyed reading like I did and I wanted to have discussions with people about books and that was a big reason why I started my blog. And so I just figured that that enthusiasm would translate over into a YouTube channel and it really didn't. And I just didn't find the joy. Not only, you know, I don't even, like even in the beginning when I only had like five subscribers, like obviously I didn't have a lot of views, but it just wasn't like, fun for me making the videos and that's kind of what threw me off and then when I started making the beauty videos like I don't feel like there's ever been a day where I'm like oh man I need to film again today you know I'm always super excited I love doing this I love talking about what I'm talking about so it just the beauty videos just really translated better and not to say that I 
don't enjoy books obviously because I still read every single day. I'm always talking about where I'm reading. I still have my blog. I still have all my Chiclet Plus social media pages. It just for whatever reason did not translate into YouTube and that was the only part that made me want to give up because I wasn't finding happiness with it. And she said, if so, what made you keep going? It was that I finally decided, you know, to explore this other passion that I had and to finally give it a go. So that's what made me really not give up. And then I'm really glad that I made that decision because I'm really glad I'm here and I'm really thankful for all the relationships that I've made. So I'm glad that I didn't give up. Okay, this is probably gonna be the final question. Um, what? This is from Pink Cloud 2013. She said, what's the first beauty brand you ever used and what's your favorite beauty product currently? The first beauty brand I ever used, no, I'm trying to think. It's probably something along the lines of like Maybelline. I can remember using Maybelline back in high school um, or even like my mom used to wear Avon quite a bit so I would use like her Avon makeup. Um, so those are like the first two brands I can really remember. The first high-end makeup purchase that I ever made was from Too Faced. I bought their Primed and Poreless Primer and also one of their eye palettes. I actually used to like be an affiliate for Too Faced, not an affiliate, what am I trying to say? I used to be like a product reviewer for Too Faced way back in the day when I was still doing the beauty reviews and posts on my blog, Chiclet Plus, before I moved that to mostly an all book blog, I would do beauty reviews and Too Faced, when they were a new company, contacted me and asked me and I wrote reviews for them. They sent me the very first Better Than Sex mascara for me to try out and post photos of. This was before YouTube. This was all done on my blog. Um, and yeah, Too Faced used to send me makeup way back way back in the day now Too Faced is like girl and I'm like Too Faced <laughs> and then she said what's your favorite beauty product currently that's like the hardest thing in the world to say my favorite beauty product currently I mean I don't I'm, I'm looking around my office like what is it that I love I can see three boxes of pure eyelashes sitting out I wear pure lashes every single day. I have Trend Center on. They just came out with lashes. I feel like it is so bright. This is the first time I'm using my new ring light. Um, but they just came out with lashes. I'm completely obsessed with them. I love lashes. I wear lashes almost every single day. Doesn't matter if I'm on social media or not. I'm going to wear lashes. And the pure lashes are amazing. So I'm going to wrap it up there for the Q&A. It is going crazy outside we are in severe weather risk right now so i'm gonna go we'll pop on the tv and make sure i don't need to be like taking cover and i'm sitting in front of a window with a ring light in front of me that's probably not the best place that i could be right now but thank you guys so much thank you to everyone who asked questions and thank you for requesting this q a i hope that you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned a little bit more about me um but let me know what you thought in the comments down below what you thought of the q a and again just thank you i haven't done a q a for in a while because i just didn't know if People really wanted a Q&A for me. So um, that was really exciting when I saw it being requested. And then for it to win the Twitter poll, just like gave me all kinds of feels. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. I really do appreciate it. But thank you guys so much. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because that really does help me out. I hope that you will consider subscribing before you go. And I'll catch you guys real soon in my next one. Bye.